Hey everybody, this is Ryan Whittings from Metageek. I'm here today to talk about work from home Wi-Fi. As you can see, I'm working from home. Um, I normally work in my office, but with the spread of COVID-19, Metageek is working remote now, as I'm sure many of you are. We make tools to help with Wi-Fi, mostly for businesses and some for home. And so with everybody working from home now, we decided to put together more tutorials to help people that are working from home to make sure that their Wi-Fi is reliable enough for not just their usual Netflix and Apple TV, but now also for Zoom, all the video conferences, uh, Google Hangouts, and everything else that they're doing for work while they're at home as we all try to social distance and stop the spread of COVID-19. So one thing that we did at Medigeek is we just created this page called medigeek.com slash work from home Wi-Fi. If you go here, we have a lot of tutorials, software downloads, and other things to help you with your home Wi-Fi to make sure that it's reliable for, for all of your work. If you scroll down, there's a number of tutorials here aimed at, the first two right here are aimed at uh, remote employees, and the third one is more from the IT support pers perspective on what they can do to help remote employees. All of the links will open in a new tab. Let's open the first lesson, and this is just ensuring your home Wi-Fi is ready for work from home, so this is basics. Um, the first things we need to do is create a free account at medic.com, and then download Insider for either Windows or Mac. As you can see here, I've downloaded Insider, and I will put in my credentials that I just created from the new account, and then we log in. Insider is a um, Wi-Fi scanner, so it'll use your built-in Wi-Fi radio to just go and look and see all the networks that are around you, and this will give us some good information about your network and the other networks so we can set yours up properly. Okay, so my home network is called Team Mary Extreme. Uh, our daughter is named Mary, and we used to have an airport extreme for access point, so it became Team Mary Extreme. Uh, I know it's mine because you can see the chain, it's connected, and also if you're connected to a network, it'll automatically star it as your starred network. If you don't have a starred network, just go over here to signal, sort it so the strongest signals are at the top. Your network should be somewhere near the top, and then once you get there, um, there'll be a binocular icon, you can click that. And then it comes to here for more um, network details. And then you can start your network right here. So start your network in the breadcrumbs. OK, let's go back to the main screen. Now we all have a start network. We can tell you a little bit more about what's going on. The signal column is very important. So for Wi-Fi to work reliable, you need a signal of at least minus 67 dBm. So if you take your laptop um, and walk around your house to wherever you need the Wi-Fi to work for work, then just ensure that you have a signal of at least minus 67. If you don't, we may need to move your access point or put in a mesh system or something like that. But if you have at least minus 67, you should be good as far as the signal goes. Another thing to look at is the security. If you go over to the security column and you just hold your mouse on it, it'll tell you what kind of security you have. If you have a green lock, you should have at least WPA2 or WPA3. These are secure and will work fine. If you only have a WEP or WPA without the two or three, those are old, have been hacked, and are fairly vulnerable. So that's um, discouraged to have, and if that's all you have, probably look at getting a new access point. Okay, that's the basics on the first screen. Let's go in and take a look at the details. Now this is looking at just our network, or just my network, and so you can see down here in the graph, this is pretty important too, that I have one access point in 2.4 gigahertz, and I have one access point in 5 gigahertz. And the color here matches, so this one here that's purple is the 2.4, this one here that's green is the 5 gigahertz. If you've selected it, it'll go blue, and so you can see that's what you've selected. Let's look at 2.4 gigahertz first. One important thing is you can see how these all the channels overlap. In 2.4 gigahertz, the channel numbers are actually smaller than the channel widths, and so they overlap. The only channels we recommend using are channels 1, 6, and 11, because those are far enough apart that they won't overlap. So if you're using channel 2, 3, 4, um, 7, these are not good channels. They overlap with two other main channels, and everybody's trying to talk over each other. It's, it's not good. It's kind of like being in a loud bar, trying to get work done, and everybody else is talking, and, and you can't have your own conversation. So we recommend channels 1, 6, and 11 in 2.4 gigahertz. On the 5 gigahertz side, there's a lot more channels that don't overlap. The actual width of these is more like this. And so these are really wide. Most channels are skinny. One thing to look at, 
on my 5 gigahertz it says the width is 80 megahertz right here. That means it's actually taking four two, um, 20 megahertz channels wide. If there was other networks going on over here, it would be kind of rude to take all 80 megahertz. Since there's not any neighbors transmitting where I am, it's okay to have 80 megahertz. Um, and it actually allows us to go a lot faster on the data rate. As you can see up here, 2.4 gigahertz is just under 200 megabits per second. And my 5 gigahertz is over 800 megabits per second. And the reason it's so much faster is because it's using that 80 megahertz wide channel. Okay, so we've looked at 2.4 gigahertz channel number or channel numbering. We've looked at 5 gigahertz channel numbering and channel widths. We've also looked at how your signal strength is and your security. If you have any questions with any of those parts, our tutorials um, have links to other documents that help you how to configure those and change your settings. And we'll work on more recommendations for if you need to upgrade your access point, what is a good access point for you. Thank you for listening, and I hope that your home, home Wi-Fi works reliable enough for your work from home and that we all get through this COVID-19 um, social distancing thing. Thank you.